Okay. Put it back. Um, <clears throat> still really grinding. What is the deal? Alright, audio is still the same. Boo. Let's see. Oh, these, no. All right. Well, I must apologise. This is not cool. Uh, OBS is not helping. Um. Since my stream is unstable, so it may be internet connection uh, combined with OBS sucking all the all the juice. Ah, here it is. What's this? All right. Thanks, Patrick. Send me a quick little message. No, it's, yeah, it might sound like that. It's, uh, it's having trouble. <clears throat> Come on. Come on, computer. Can we join the Zoom call? Um, like I said, you may have to do that. Um, Settings video output. <coughs> Alright, let's just I'll just send everyone a a link to this um, this meeting. The invite link. Uh, I'm gonna send it to Discord. I'm not sticking in the general <laughs> um yeah there's x that's i would i would agree um i need discord crack it open all right everyone over to discord Now Discord wants to check for updates. Thank you. Oh, weird. Um. Okay. Well, maybe we don't go to Discord. Yeah, Chris. Others are saying the same. That is very unusual. Uh, I don't know what I did. I just opened Discord and suddenly it started working. All right, let's quickly push on before it breaks. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully not. Oh man, Discord's trying to update. All right, let's just roll. So here's an example. Right, so we looked at a couple of examples yesterday of cochain complexes but here's another one um short exact sequence so it's a cochain complex So it has three terms that aren't zero. Yeah, Jivan, good, good point. Um, 
<coughs> so we have three terms that are non-zero in general and we require the following things so it's it's oh, it's already a complex uh, so we know the composite of i and p are zero is zero but we also have Uh, the kernel of i is zero, which is the same thing as saying i is injective. The image of i is the same as the kernel of p, so this is inside m. And also um, the image of p is all of n. Jump into the yeah space kitter. Sorry, this is highly uncool. So we might have to use Zoom tomorrow, unless anyone can get me a computer real quick. <coughs> so this is um. Not just i is injective and p is subjective, we have this condition too. So here's an example of one of these. And these things are our friends. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> if I say it's a pro, if, so space kid, if it's a proper subset, I will explicitly denote it so uh, if I forget and use uh, this symbol and this symbol interchangeably so Chris uh, this is the definition right <clears throat> so I haven't said what exact means I'm just saying there's something called a, a short exact sequence which is a co-chain co complex that looks like this. So I have three non-zero uh, things with, so being a co-chain complex means this. So that's, that's a recall. And all the other conditions are trivial. And then these three, these three are just conditions. So if you know what exactness is, this is precisely exactness. It's just what it means in elementary terms. So more, more e.g. So I can take um, a number mod 2, that's either 0 or 1, and multiply it by 2. And I can also take a number mod 4 and reduce it mod 2. Right, so a 1 and a 3 both become a 1. And a 0, two or four, uh, a zero or a 2 become a 0. Um, Right, that's one and another one similar but different is uh, we have the same outside uh, groups maybe I should remark this is all R modules here here I'm thinking R equals Z. So this is a uh, these are just abelian groups. All right, so the two maps here. The 
first one just includes uh, a number as the, the first component and the second map projects onto just the second component and both of these are short exact sequences all right okay so let me scroll 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 this up now i had also uh, talk about maps of complexes so what's an example of something of this um, <clears throat> here's an example from um, multivariable calculus not a very complicated one, but let me just write it. This is too big, too big. All right, so there we have um, a cochain complex on the top, which is kind of boring. It just has a single non-zero thing. Um, everything here is over vector spaces over R and we have here so this is smooth functions and that's not right that should be a U sorry everyone So some open region in R3. This is vector fields. And we have the gradient, curl, and the divergence. Okay, what is this map? This map is, it sends a number to the, the function constant of that number. And the usual calculations from undergrad multivariable calculus tell us that this bottom row is a, a cochain complex. And uh, the fact that this is a map of cochain complexes boils down to the fact that a constant function has zero gradient. Okay, one more example. Any questions so far? Just while I start prepping this one. So I'm going to use the notation from yesterday where we looked at the, um, the, tetra, uh, the tetrahedron and the, the triangle with the directed edges and so forth, the oriented faces. D0, D1. So this is 
you just draw these. Right. <clears throat> so there are maps. Uh, let's see on the phi zero, phi one, phi two. And we can write them down. Um, so these these maps delta zero, delta one, d zero and d one. Um, we wrote them down yesterday. Uh, just some particular matrices. And if I write down. This is essentially a projection. It throws away uh, one dimension, and same with phi one. Uh, lots of zeros everywhere. And phi two is this matrix. <clears throat> okay, so as an exercise, I think this works. Okay, how's everyone going? And how's the quality, more importantly? Am I understandable? So there's stacks of chat. Um, okay, no, that's fine. <laughs> Luke, ho ho, sorry. Should stay in the lecture chat during the lecture. Could not be distracted by the. Okay. Hi, right. um, Joshua. Um, mostly a matter of uh, convention. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Better than yesterday. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> Basically, we are thinking of the differentials as increasing degree. So I wrote down, sorry, I'm going to zoom myself over to uh, somewhere over here. So my definition here of, of cochain complex, I've got my, my differentials are going from degree n minus 1 to n to n plus 1 and so on. And so a uh, chain complex people would talk about the differentials going down, right? So you'd have a differential going n plus 1 to n to n minus 1. It's not a huge, um, a huge thing. It's more just linguistic, trying to be uh, consistent so that if you look at other references, it will be consistent. Often I might just say complex. Uh, the zeros are the zero module. Um, so it's a zero, like it's the, you know, it's like the zero dimensional vector space, space kit. It's, you know, a single point. It's definitely not empty. Um, yeah, Peter, so there's weird things about, you can like do the negative of all the subscripts uh, in this, in this thing. I'm not going to play around with that. Okay. So this is basically a flavor. We're going to get to these things um, in more detail. Right, but you can you can see that they're, they're quite rich. There's a lot of linear information going on, separated out into different dimensions, and how they relate. And especially if you're using, um, you know, when I'm saying abelian groups here, or vector spaces, you know, these examples we're looking at are finite dimensional or finitely generated. Ah, oh, initial objects. Yeah, the zero module is initial and final. 
Um, not if things aren't necessarily going to be finite dimensional eventually, and so you know, if you just take take an abelian group, then a homomorphism between an arbitrary pair of abelian groups can be very complicated. I mean, my examples here, uh, you know, all vector fields on an open set in R three. This is an enormous vector space. So it's not a, you can't write down a matrix that represents these differential operators. Okay. All right, but how do we get these things? We've got to go back. All right, we had our little philosophical idea about um, triangulating spaces and then somehow extracting a cochain complex from it. So we've got to think about hard how we encode spaces. So that's where we want to. That's really the meat of this section. Right? We're all over the, the giant, the, the, the warm up. All right, let's push myself here. <clears throat> right, so, what's, what's the simplest notion of space we can think of? It's basically uh, a graph, something one dimensional. So, I'm going to start with one dimension and accelerate past two and then up to arbitrary. So, Three, lynch me. All right. So I'm going to think about simple directed graphs. So what is it? So we have a, let's call it gamma, say. Edge sets of vertices and edges. And we have a pair of functions. So assigning to each edge its starting and ending vertex. Um, but I have two conditions. One is that the map from edges to pairs of vertices is injective. So sing only single edges between a pair of vertices. And the, uh, the image of this map uh, is outside the diagonal. This is the diagonal. So I don't have loops from a vertex to itself. And here's the picture you should keep in mind. So if I have an edge like this, it goes to d0 of e from d1 of e. So this is our little picture. <clears throat> and this, this corresponds to how we were orienting edges yesterday in the first lecture. Um, so this was like 0 and 1, and we're mapping from 0 to 1. So this convention of where the 1s and the zeros go, I'm going to explain that um, more thoroughly as we go on, but just take it as a convention for now. Okay, let's pop that up there. <clears throat> so. For examples, um, I'm going to just introduce notation, which will be more meaningful later. <clears throat> but if you know what it is, it might seem familiar. And I might drop the subscripts on the sets of vertices and edges after a while to save time. And so for finite things like this, we can draw them. So let me write down what this map is. Actually, I'm doing it the other way now. It's a bit sneaky. And we can 
can draw a picture of this. So this is an unfilled triangle. A like so. All right, so this is unfilled. All right, so this is the boundary, if you like, of what we saw yesterday with the oriented triangle. So that's example one. Let me just keep that on the page. EG2. Um, all right, we've got the same edges and vertices set sets but the edge C is oriented in the other direction uh, that's not what I want I want B Alright, so this is a different graph, sort of a cyclic graph if you like. Um, we can just go smaller. So here the edge set has a single element and I drew this one above. So the intuition, if we look at this little uh, example, is that the subscript on the D throws out that element. And this is going to become a recurring theme. Uh, we can go even smaller. Don't need that. Uh, yes, uh, DMN. Um, yeah, sorry, that's um, some conflation of notation. Yeah, so these. Oh dang, this is really bad. Yeah, that's that's a very different thing. There are only so many letters, even when you sorry, space kidder. <clears throat> there are only so many letters, even when you're using two alphabets. Yeah, so here delta is more like a triangle in these examples. Okay, so this is going to do your noodle a bit. So here we have the empty set and then the set consisting of a single thing called zero. So that's, um, again, I did not invent the notation. But here D0 and D1 are the unique maps from the empty set to this one element set V of vertices. Okay. All right, so these are just some little tiny examples uh, which will come in useful. Okay, some more examples. So say we're given a pair of directed graphs, simple directed graphs, we can make the 
disjoint union. Um, what am I doing? Oh, the disjoint union of the vertices and the disjoint union of the edges. Okay, so this is a thing we can do. Um, and you just, you know, if you want to draw the picture, you just plonk them side by side, and that's a new uh, directed graph. It's not connected anymore. Okay, any questions? They don't have to be finite. Um, you can do things like a directed graph um, where you've got an edge for every integer um, you can do crazy things like uncountable sets and so on like the set of vertices is the set of points on the real plane, R2. And there's a arrow from a point to another point. You know, if they, uh, the slope on the line between them is rational or something. <clears throat> yeah, so, so the example is like just taking a pair of things and taking their disjoint union. Um, so I could do. something like this where the, the graph is a thing inside the dotted line so th I mean you could do two copies of the same thing even um, or arbitrary many copies right this is just a uh, um, starting small okay but so, <clears throat> so so our ultimate goal is to get something linear right? and so um, we have to think how we get modules or even just vector spaces or abelian groups out of a directed graph so we talked about um, incidents um, matrices and then kind of had some sort of variant on that but we got to get a bit more systematic just you know something small that we can look at and think about okay that's an oriented triangle that's not so bad but let's say I mean some ten dimensional thing it's you know we can't rely on our intuition so we've got to get something that's systematic <clears throat> and even going back one step how do you get a set sorry how do you, how do you get a module from a set Right, forget about getting a cochain complex. How do you get a module from a set? So there's two ways, at least. So one way is take your set, let's call it S send s to the free module generated by s you know, in symbols something like S so a finite sum of things indexed by the elements of S but with coefficients from R so that's one way of doing it so 
So if R was a field, this is just the vector space whose basis is the set S. Or, and clearly this is the one that I care about because, yeah, so Chris, it's like a free group. Um, so you basically go, um, you have a, an ele you know, each element in S is like a basis vector. And then you can have all scalar multiples of that. So these are like the scalar multiples. And then you can have arbitrary finite sums of these things. But here, because it's a module, you have like scalar, you have coefficients. Um, a and S, yes, sorry. Um, Luke, that's. Hold on, my pen is not liking this particular option. No, Luke, sorry, that was that was my typo. Um, uh, universal property, probably. Not something I'm going to talk about right yet. The other alternative is take my set and send it to a set of functions. Um, so the set of functions from my set to my ring and my field is a module and it's isomorphic to the product of S many copies of R and so if S is some infinite set it's not the same as the, as the free module um, so because you can have for instance the function that's constant at the the unit of the ring uh, it's constant at the function number one and so this can't be a, thought of as a finite sum of things associated to each element in S So it's the difference between the direct sum and the direct product, if you've seen that before. Okay, and they have different behaviors uh, with respect to, uh, is that an action? Um, sorry, space kit. I'm just trying to think. Um, to clarify so, so this is an assignment of this taking the set and giving a module not quite sure um, maybe clarify in just a moment Okay, all right. Uh, different behavior with respect to maps uh, functions. All right. So someone was asking about um, homology in the chat um, yesterday. Roughly the first one here is what you do if you want homology and the second one is what you do if you want cohomology and we're doing the second one all right so the different behavior um the care 
the thing I care about <coughs> is if I have a function f from s to t then what I get is a function sending a function from t to r to a function from s to r by composition whereas if I think about the uh, the free module you get a map in the other direction and between the corresponding modules and so this is our starting point given given a set we can get uh, an R module and give it a function we can get a linear map and this was something that was in the quiz, I believe, if I remember correctly. So first lemma, the compatibility of these things. You have nice behavior. Space Kitter, this is true. I'm slowly warming up. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, the quizzes haven't been haven't come out yet. It's got oh, Tommy, yes, sorry. There was a quiz uh, pre summer school, like even pre enrollment, there was a little quiz. Uh, with just a sample of some questions that were aimed to sort of give you an idea of roughly the sorts of ideas that will be at the start of the course. Yeah, so that's um, that was on the AMSI website, Tommy, the quiz. The actual course quizzes, the first one will be out tomorrow. Uh, they will be announced in Canvas. Okay, All right, so there's a nice compatibility. Okay, so let's give the definition quickly. And tomorrow, yeah, we will <clears throat> fight the gremlins again hopefully beat them faster so CPLX is my standard abbreviation for complex So you have to think, so just standard, I'm just going to take the, the ring R to be the integers. I could actually specify a different ring here, um, but I'm not going to do that right now. So this is just plain vanilla, everything is an abelian group. And what does this map delta do? So it takes a function from V gamma to Z and forms this thing. So it precomposes with D0 and D1 
and then takes the pointwise difference. Like so. Um, it's a cochain complex uh, for trivial reasons because we've just got zeros out here. And so there's no two non zero maps to compose to check. Um, another thing of notation we might just note C0 gamma is the first group. C1 of gamma is a second group. All right. And so the big question we want to ask ourselves, and I leave you with, is how far. Big question. How far is delta being from an isomorphism? So we can look at its kernel, and we can look at its co-kernel. So that's the, the C1 mod the image of delta. All right, so I think we'll have to leave it there. Um, I have a bunch of examples. I might record a separate video on those and upload that separately. It's worth running through it in slow detail. Yeah, Chris, if it's exact. Challenge to you, Chris. Find us a directed graph where it's an isomorphism. Or anyone else who wishes to think about it. Anyway, I will, I will log off. Um, happy to chat in Discord. And we will see what we can do about tomorrow's lecture quality. Thanks for your patience today. Uh, cool. Catch you later.